I think, as far as Judaism is concerned, I think comes out of fear of being persecuted. Yeah. Because for, for centuries, literally, to confess that you were an Orthodox or a believing Jew who believed in God was a death penalty, mm -hmm. or at least a banishment from the country. And not just, it's, it's currently in many places. Well, even in many in countries, France, tragically. Right. Yeah. So, so one learned not to talk about mm. God. Not because one didn't believe, right. but because one yeah. shielded it. And not so even. what you have then is all these incredible Jewish intellectuals like Derrida, Wittgenstein, Freud, Marx, all these brilliant Jewish intellectuals who refuse to talk about God. They talk around mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. They talk about universal grammar, mm -hmm. you know, blah, blah, blah. But they never will talk about God. And I think that's where it comes from, not God's speech. It comes from those centuries of persecution. Mm. I, of course, would like to open the windows mm, yeah. and get everybody talking about God, but in a totally new way. That right. um, you know, so that um, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's not that they don't talk about God in synagogues. I mean, they read the mm -hmm. Bible, they read Torah, it's there. they talk. Yeah. But it's but the theol. You know, they're not. It's not about believing a specific thing to be a Jew. It's transcended by your tribal connection. Mm -hmm. right. So they, so they do talk about God and and you know the best way to live out a God filled life or you know whatever. But um, there's it's it's just different than Christianity because it's you, there's not one set of beliefs that are right unless you're in the orthodox orthodox tradition. Mm -hmm. And even then, you can believe whatever you want. You just still have to do all the practices. You can believe whatever you want. Maybe you wouldn't talk about it, mm -hmm. but you can. You know, no one is going to question your. Mm. Which is one of the system. beauties of Judaism: free mm -hmm. belief. It, it is it's about practice, practices. Mm -hmm. you know. mm. I agree and, with what what you are saying because in my family, both my both my parents Jews, my grandparents Jews, um, my parents had exactly that view. Mm. Um, we're Jewish, but we're not religion, and we're not going to talk about it. And they were very, very clear about that to me. Um, so I found it really fascinating. But on Friday night, all the people that they met with were people like them. They were all mm. displaced Jews from Eastern Europe who met at my parents' house on a Friday night um, from around the world. They didn't talk religion, but they talked, they talked together on a Friday night. And what they discussed was politics and mm -hmm. politics. They discussed politics. They were socialists. Mm -hmm. So what I, when I was really thinking about what does God mean to me, does God, what does Jesus mean to me, when I was really evaluating that for myself, I realized that the discussion about God wasn't under the umbrella called God, but they discussed it politically. Mm -hmm. And they discussed qualities of things that were very important to them, which is kindness mm -hmm. and understanding yeah. and integrity right. and right. being kind to your neighbour and doing nice things. Mm. And I think that's godly. Mm -hmm. So they just used a different language. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a common experience. For me, that's a common mm -hmm. experience. If I am around Jews, they won't, might not analyse what it means, what God means, but they talk about it in terms of the okay. qualities that you want to live your mm -hmm. life by and raise your children by, which is being kind to each other and looking after one another, right. being of service. So that, that's where it works for me. Right, it, it's, it brings it all it's together. practice, it's actual enactment, it's not theological no. doctrines. No, it's not. So theological. that's what I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Mm. It's goodly rather than godly. <laughs> well, they see it as God. I mean, they see it ultimately as mm. it's not. Not, not my, my parents were like that they belonged to Arbeiter Ring, which is the Workmen's Circle, which was a socialist group in the States. But it may not, they may not say God, but this is ultimately what the Jewish values are. And that's the values that Yeshua proclaimed too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that they, worked for me. Yeah. I, I think conversations that mm -hmm. discussed God in that way that was up there, I would have walked out and not been interested. But what intrigued right. me as a young person growing up in that household with two parents, said, we don't believe in God, we don't believe in religion, because look what religion has done. To... Yeah. That was the general atmosphere, and yet they mm. met on a Friday night, and we all had wonderful challah, and hmm. yeah. kosher mm. chicken. we had kosher chicken, for goodness sake. And yet here they were, saying, we're mm -hmm. not Jews, you're not practicing religious Jews, well then what are you then? 
So it's like, it's partly like, mm. interesting to me what you said, that you wouldn't say that it's about God, because why would you name it? Because then you're, you're making yourself very public, and that's don't, that could be very Well, it's also kind of with the, 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 um, the taboo on naming the name of God. You, an Orthodox Jew doesn't speak the name of God because it's unspeakable. Mm -hmm. right. we can't, none of us can actually say the name of God. The, the name of God is all the names in one. Mm -hmm. How could anyone, the closest we can come to is being, which is what existentialism affirms, and I'm a kind of philosophical ontologist, and I would agree with that. So how can we speak the pure being? It's in everything, it's in everybody, it's in every language. And uh, so we can resonate and, and appreciate the silence, because in that, the speaking mm -hmm. of that absolute comes to each one of us in our own language and dialect which is probably the Acts Holy Spirit getting the tongues down, it looks like. <laughs> Are you going to finish your session with a little, like, celebrate, like a ceremony, or you know, how do you want I, to end this? To be honest, I didn't know I was supposed to do that until Nana mentioned that you were playing that. So, uh, um, you know, I at this point I'm just trying to think, you know, I don't, I don't know. I do have a, a Jewish prayer that I could say. Mm. It's a short Jewish yeah. prayer, you know, because it is mm -hmm. gone on rather long. But I will just say, um, so this is called the bedtime Shema. It's only four lines, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know if you know it, but um, I love it. Yeah. So the English translation is um, in the name, the name of the Holy One. Michael is on my right side, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, my left. In front of me, Uriel, behind me, Raphael, and above my head, above my head, is the Shekinah, the Divine Feminine Presence. And Jews, when they talk about God, often they'll say Hashem, the name, because that's, you can't say what the name is, you just say the name, Hashem. So, um, so I'll say it in Hebrew. Um, Bashem Hashem Elohei Yisrael, Mimini Michael, Miss Molly Gabriel, Uli Fanai, Uriel, Makai Raphael, the Al Roshi, the Al Roshi, Shachinat El. And Hashem. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.